Welcome back to the next video of conversation uh, in our series, People Solutions with Lockton. I'm Travis Brashear. And as we've said in some of the uh, earlier videos, the purpose of these conversations is, is sort of twofold. One, to really get into the issues of the day around healthcare and the challenges our clients are facing going forward in 2024 and beyond. And then also to broaden the conversation um, with HR executives and business leaders and, and really assisting them in connecting some of these strategies back to their, to their broader people solutions. But today we're really gonna spend time in the healthcare industry, more specifically in the pharmaceutical business and in what's happening uh, in the PBM world. And we're delighted today to have our national practice leader with us, Jelena Meyer. Welcome. Great, thanks Travis, so happy to be here with you. Thanks, thanks for being here and making the time. Let's start with the thing that I think everybody's talking about, at least in some of my circles, is what's, what's going on with some of this weight, the weight loss drug issue. Yeah, we know that obesity is a real problem in this country, and some of the newer drugs are frankly very effective. Um, but the challenges that we have facing us really now today with all these is, first of all, the cost. Uh, incredibly expensive. And so as we start thinking about the challenge of managing obesity, um, these drugs are just one component and they need to be used appropriately. And I think some of the concerns we have right now is they may not be uh, being used appropriately. And so if you think about it from our client's perspective, how long is it gonna take us to figure out whether the, the benefits of this potentially down the road offset you know, some of the other challenges that we have that we know the comorbidities around being obese carry with them in terms of cost and, and impact to productivity, et cetera. Any idea? Yeah, I think it's gonna take some time and you're gonna to have to look at this holistically if you're a benefit manager to say, what is my overall obesity management from, whether it be bariatric surgery or lifestyle changes um, along with the medications. And I think frankly, we're not there yet. The industry needs to catch up to say, how do we integrate the lifestyle management with the medications with this holistic approach? Um, and the data so far is not showing that offset on the medical side cost. Um, even the manufacturers have not been able to prove that they can lower overall medical cost. And within locked in, our data um, suggests that is accurate. We're, we're not seeing that as well as people that are on it. And so the question will be, how long will that return take? Um, and it's just not there yet. Okay, so what is the best practice then today? What, what is our best advice or what are you seeing our clients deciding ultimately for 2024 and beyond? I would say for most clients who are not covering the anti-obesity drugs today, they are not adding coverage. And our recommendation would be to pause and wait until we truly have that integrated lifestyle management with the medication as we have more information around can people ever safely terminate the medications and maintain the weight loss. Once we get there, I think there'll be more evidence there. So I would say don't add it. Um, I will say for a lot of our clients who have been covering it, they're actually removing coverage for next year because they have seen their costs just skyrocket. Um, and it's been interesting, um, the, the, for the first time in I don't know how many years, we are seeing the non-specialty drug trend outpace specialty drugs. And it is driven by this one category alone, the, the GLP-1 drugs, which are used for diabetes as well as weight loss. But those two together are driving trend high. So if you're, um, if you're sitting in that benefits management seat and you're, and you're talking to employees about this, is there anything that they can do to help employees that decide maybe they want to do this and pay for it themselves? We've got cash cards and discount cards and good RX and those types of things. Is there, is there, are there any best practices for people who are willing to pay for the, the uh, weight loss drugs on their own? Yeah, I mean, I think from a cost perspective, there are some assistance out there from the manufacturers with some copay cards. And I think really the guidance would be to really talk to your doctor about what is the what is the best for you as a patient? Do you really need to lose this much weight? What are you doing from a lifestyle process to help assist that? Because all the clinical trials were a combination of the drug and the lifestyle change. So you really need to be conscious of how you're gonna combine those. And then lastly, I think you really need to have a very serious conversation about what are the side effects. Uh, they're not pleasant. And uh, it appears that because of that two thirds discontinuation rate, it could well be that side effects is what's driving that early discontinuation. Okay. So plenty of challenges here. 
revisit this potentially six months down the road or for 2025 and see if, if there are any major changes? Yeah, I think revisiting for 25 is, is very valid and we'll probably have you know eight, nine more months of data and maybe we'll have a different position at that point. Well, thanks again, Jelena, really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of People Solutions with Lockton.